The wait is over, and we're excited to bring you our all new audio solutions for 2019 and newer Polaris Razor Pro XP. Welcome back, I'm Eric, and today we're gonna to show you how to install the all new Stage 5 on this 2021 Polaris Razor Pro XP4 Premium. Before purchasing, we recommend reviewing our compatibility chart to help you choose the right stage kit for your Razor. To help with the installation, you'll notice our new packaging contain layers to make it easier to find each component. The components for each step are grouped together on a single layer. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see this icon, indicating the layer where you can find the components needed for that step. Now, a majority of the installation on the Pro XP is the same. Regardless if your model is equipped with Ride Command, we'll be covering every scenario in this video. To get started, we always recommend disconnecting the power before working on any electronics. The battery is located under the driver's seat. To remove the seats, you may need to disconnect the seat belts. For the front seats, the disengage lever is forward facing. For the rear seats, the lever is behind the headrest. Once you have access to your battery, use a 10 millimeter socket or wrench to disconnect the positive and negative terminals. Now we're ready to disassemble the dash. Start with the upper pocket by removing the USB cable if equipped with Ride Command. Next, we'll remove the dash trim panels. Then, using a T40 Torx driver, disassemble the upper dash and hood. Once that's done, use a T25 Torx to detach the glove box liner. Now you can remove the dash assembly from the vehicle. Then finally, remove the crash bar and the front LED panel. Now that that's done, use a T40 to disassemble the driver's side front quarter panel. For this install, we also need to remove a single panel screw from the passenger side. This is because it captures the front speaker pod that will be removed later. Now we'll disassemble the driver's side lower rocker panel with the T40 Torx. Don't forget a couple screws in the back before completely removing it. Now we'll remove the back firewall that comes apart in two pieces. First, Twist the quick releases and remove the upper portion. Then do the same procedure to remove the bottom. If your model is equipped with a factory audio system, we'll need to remove it. Otherwise, you can skip to the next section. Start by removing the front speaker grills. 
Then remove the speaker pods using a T25 Torx bit. Proceed to detach the tweeters, unplugging them and pushing them back through the rubber housing. For the rear speaker pods, remove the retaining screws, unclip the speaker pod from the bracket, then disconnect the wiring harness. Now we're ready to get access to the battery tray. To get started, remove the large rubber grommet and hole saw from layer two. Using the hole saw, cut the hole in the battery tray. Remove any plastic flashing and insert the grommet in place. All right, now we're ready to install the main harness. To get started, remove the harness from layer two. All right, let's take a moment to look at the main power harness. The first are the amplifier connections. Next, the battery terminals. Then we move on to the amplifier inputs. Here we have the front speaker and RGB expansion. And here we have the RGB connectors, the source unit, the front and the sub connections, and finally the rear RGB expansion along with the optional subwoofer and rear speaker connectors. We've included two Color Optics expansion connectors built into our wiring harness for installation of additional RGB accessories such as LED whips or rock lights. The total current capacity is specified at two amps. All right, now that we got that covered, let's go ahead and get this installed on our Razor. Start by running the harness along the driver's side to estimate your securing points. Align the power connections with the battery location and extend the rear speaker wires to the back of the vehicle. For the power connections, remove the waterproof cover from the fuse holder and insert the B positive cable through the grommet. Then insert the ground cable. Estimate the location to the battery with a little slack for connection to the battery at a later time. For the source unit connections, slightly remove the interior panel and route the RCA's and white Molex connector behind the door latch frame, up into the dash area. Position the remaining cables in the dash cavity. For the rear speaker connections, route the harness with the Deutsch connectors and the RGB expansion cables behind the subframe bars toward the back of the UTV. Now position the RGB expansion and other cables so they align with the subframe crossbar. Continue routing the rear speaker harnesses through the floorboard into the rear cabin. Route the harnesses back through the rear firewall opening and up the firewall itself. Red goes to the right passenger side and the other connector goes to the left side. Route the right harness along the rear frame, being careful to stay away from any hot engine or moving suspension components. Detach the three push pins at the rear roll bar area and push the connector through the access hole. Replace the pins and extend the harness for connection to the rear speaker.
Now that you're done, perform the same process on the driver's side. Remove the provided zip ties and zip tie clips from layer two. In the dash, notice the alignment of the source unit connections in relation to the dash subframe. Attach the zip tie clips to the lower shelf on the dashboard subassembly. Zip tie the main harness to the upper part of the subframe. Extend the optional rear subwoofer connector to the back wall and zip tie it in place. Continue to zip tie the rear speaker harnesses along the back firewall and through the engine bay along the main frame. Again, be careful to stay away from any hot engine or moving suspension components. Now we're ready to prep our amp. Remove the amplifier assembly, foam strips, and hardware from layer two. To prepare the amplifier for Pro XP models, use the thick foam strip, aligning the edge with the back side of the bracket. Now we're ready to install our amplifier. Start by removing the J-clip from the hardware pack. On the back of the amplifier bracket, align the catch hanger to the open slot in the door hinge frame. We used the screwdriver to keep the bracket aligned while we secured the nut to the J-clip using a 10 millimeter socket. Now we're ready to make our amplifier wiring connections. We've included dielectric grease to maintain water resistant connections. Apply the grease to each socket before attaching the connector. Start by attaching the power and subwoofer harnesses to the molded connector. Then attach the front and rear speaker outputs to the front and rear speaker harnesses.
Last, using the input harness, connect the front input to the amplifier's front connector and the sub input to the amplifier's sub connector. Finally, clean up your wiring with the provided zip ties. Now we need to prep our RGB controller. Start by removing the PMX RGB assembly and the hardware from layer number two. Use the included zip ties to secure the output harness to the back of the bracket so they are oriented all in the same direction. Now we're ready to install our RGB controller. Attach the two speed clips to the dash subassembly and secure the bracket directly behind the instrument panel using the provided T40 torque screws. Then attach the power connector and RGB connectors to the main harness. The RGB outputs are wired in parallel, so you can use any of the provided outputs. Depending on the kit you purchased, you may be using the Ride Command or the Rockford Fosgate PMX as your source unit. In the next two sections, we'll cover both installations. If your Pro XP already has Ride Command, this step will show you how to interface the audio and use Ride Command as your source unit. To get started, remove the Ride Command interface from layer one. Now let's take a look at the interface harness itself. This is the main power plug and remote turn on. These are RCA outputs that send front and sub signals to the amplifier. This captures the sub-signal from Ride Command. And this is the main Ride Command interface that connects to the factory wiring harness. Now we're ready to install the interface. First, disconnect the amplifier harness from behind the center console. Then, connect the white Molex to the main harness. Connect the front RCA output to the front and the sub-RCA output to the sub-RCA. Next, connect the interface adapter to the factory razor wiring harness. Then, connect the sub-signal plug to the Ride Command LCD. Finally, plug the accessory power connector from the main harness into the accessory power block. Once that's done, clean up your wiring by using the provided zip ties. Now, if your Pro XP came with Ride Command or not, this section will cover installing the Rockford Fosgate PMX as your source unit. Our Razor was factory equipped with Ride Command, so we'll show you how to remove it. First, use a T30 Torx driver to remove the three screws from the back of the Ride Command display. Pull the screen out and detach all the connectors from the back. You may need to use a small flathead screwdriver to detach some of the smaller plugs. Now we're ready to prep our PMX source unit. Remove the PMX source unit, dash kit, and the four hex screws from layer one. Align the source unit to the back of the dash bezel and attach the source unit using the four provided screws. Be careful not to over tighten these screws. Now we're ready to install the source unit. First, plug the white Molex into the PMX main harness. Then, connect the front RCA to the source unit's front line out, and the sub RCA to the source's rear sub line out.
Now, connect the antenna and carefully tuck all the cables into the dash and firmly press the dash kit into place. Next, unfold the antenna and zip tie it along the top crossbar. Finally, plug the accessory power connector from the main harness into the accessory power block. Now we're ready to install our front speaker enclosures and grills located in layer one. We'll be using the stainless steel grills supplied in your kit in lieu of the front speaker grills that came equipped on your Razor. Now, we designed the front speakers with vented enclosures for optimum sound quality. However, we've also included port covers in the kit that seal and keep the water and mud out of the enclosure. If you choose to install the port covers, they need to be installed on the inside of the enclosure, not the outside. For Pro XP models that come with factory equipped audio, we'll be replacing the front tweeters. Our kit utilizes a two-way full range driver with built-in tweeter in addition to the stainless component tweeter for even more highs. We'll be connecting the inline crossover between the tweeter and enclosure for optimum power handling. The enclosures also include a built-in color optics LED system. We'll simply peel back the protective layer from the lens before installation. Now we're ready to install our front speaker enclosures. We'll start on the passenger side and lift the enclosure into place. We'll reattach it using the same four screws on the front and two screws on the back. Then replace the T40 screw in the fender well. Let's move up to the tweeter location and attach the tweeter crossover to the front enclosure harness. Then press it into the rubber housing from the backside. Remove the backing from the trim ring and carefully press it into place. Finally, we'll attach the front speaker enclosure to the main harness. Now we'll repeat the process on the driver's side using the existing hardware for the front speaker enclosure and tweeter. Once you're done with this, you can install the stainless grille in position and we'll finish bolting it down when we replace all the panels. The passenger grille will remain off until we're finished with the subwoofer installation. All right, now we're ready to install our rear speakers. We'll start by removing the clamps and hardware from layer three and place them on the table. Now, multiple rubber inserts will be provided in your kit. So select the appropriate ones for your rollover protection system bar size. We'll show you how the assembly goes together on the table, then move to the razor to do the installation. Remove the appropriate hardware from the screw pack and prepare the screws with the lock washer first and the flat washer second so it contacts the bracket. Now, you can install the speakers on the outside or the inside of the rollover protection system. On our Razor, we'll install them on the inside to protect against trees and shrubs. When doing the install, align the bracket with the screws facing outward 
and secure them using the provided security Torx wrench. Alternate tightening down the screws so the bracket aligns evenly. Make sure to check the length of harness so it properly reaches the enclosure. Now we're ready to install the rear moto cans. We'll start by removing the enclosures from layer three and place them on the table. Remove the bolt safety covers and loosen the torque screw until it is no longer threaded into the clamp receiver hole. This will make it easier when installing the enclosure to the clamp assembly. We've included an extra set of bolt safety covers in the hardware pack in case you lose one. Now we're ready to install the rear enclosures to the clamps. Position the enclosure in place and secure it using the provided security Torx wrench. Before tightening, align the enclosures to your preference and tighten the bolt. Now, reinstall the bolt safety cover and plug the rear harness into place. Once you're done, complete the process on the other side. All right, let's take a look at the subwoofer enclosure. Remove the larger of the two enclosures and the port cap from layer four. We designed the subwoofer enclosure with a vented port for optimum sound quality. However, we've also included a port cover that seals to keep water and mud out of the enclosure. If you choose to install the port cover, it needs to be installed on the inside. Now we're ready to install our subwoofer. We'll start by removing the smaller enclosure, the floorboard bracket, crossbar bracket, and subwoofer kick plate. Next, we'll remove the three long T40 screws from the hardware pack. To get started, we'll remove the three existing T40 screws from the front passenger floorboard. Position the floorboard bracket in place with the retainer clip facing forward. Then, secure it using the three long T40 screws. Now, let's take a look at how the subwoofer assembly gets installed. Our crossbar bracket uses three screws that secure the top of the large enclosure to the razor. The lower part uses two bolts. The long bolt secures to the left side and the short bolt on the inside of the enclosure. Remove the two speed clips from the hardware pack and position them above the passenger footwell. Now we'll start positioning the enclosure in place and plug in the subwoofer Deutsch connector. We'll continue raising the enclosure until the top seats against the crossbar. Then we'll position the top bracket in place while avoiding the radio antenna or any other wiring and secure it using the three provided screws. Now we'll proceed to mount the short interior screw and the long left screw to secure the enclosure to the wall. To help you install these screws, we provided a long reach T40 driver. Now we're ready to install the subwoofer enclosure extension. We'll remove the provided screws and washers from the hardware pack. The bottom part is keyed to fit the floorboard bracket and the top is keyed to fit the extension O-ring. When installing, be sure the top and bottom O-rings mate together properly to ensure a leak-free connection. Secure the extension in place using the provided hardware. Finally, we'll install the kick plate using our four provided screws.
All right, now we're ready to mount the subwoofer. Remove the subwoofer from layer four along with the mounting screws and hex bit from the hardware pack. First, plug in the color optics and speaker Deutsch connectors. Then position the subwoofer in place. Using the provided hardware, secure the subwoofer to the enclosure. You may need to hand thread a few holes to get the subwoofer properly aligned. Now that that's done, slide the front speaker grill in place and secure it using the T40 screws. We've included a cool Rockford Fosgate branded replacement light bar for your passenger dash. Simply replace the factory one with the new cover on the LED strip and reinstall it using the existing T40 screws. All right, let's take a moment to clean up our wiring by securing any loose harnesses in place using the provided zip ties and zip tie clips. Now you're ready to make your battery connections. Insert the provided fuse and waterproof cover on the fuse holder. Be careful when inserting the fuse as not to bend it when inserting it. All right, now that we got that done, let's fire up your Razer Pro XP and power on the source unit. Make sure all functions operate like the AM FM radio and make a Bluetooth connection to your mobile device. Verify all color optics LEDs are illuminating, including the ones under the front speaker enclosures. Now that your system is dialed in, we'll go ahead and get this Razer assembled and back out on the trail. All right, as you can see, this install came together pretty easy. If you have any questions, give us a call at 1-800-669-9899 or through live chat at the bottom of rockfordfosgate.com. I'm Eric, and we'll see you in the next video.